In this problem, there is a rubber block with the dimension of 120 by 120 by 120 millimeter with the modulus of elasticity of 820 megapascals and the Poisson's ratio of 0.4. It is compressed inside a rigid container by a force of 120 kilonewton in the vertical direction. We assume that the vertical direction is y, the horizontal direction is x, and the direction perpendicular to the plane is z. Calculate the stress in the rubber block in the vertical direction, sigma y. Stress in the rubber block in the horizontal direction, sigma x. And the magnitude of deformation in the rubber block in the vertical direction, or delta y. So for this problem, first of all, we need to see what equation can we use. And perhaps, do we need to derive any new equation for solving this problem? On the right slide, I'm going to show you three equations that we have previously developed. The first slide shows the generalized Hooke's law, which is the generalized situation where stresses are acting in any direction. The second one is the plane stress situation, when we know that stress in one particular direction is zero. And the last one is plane strain situation, where we know that strain in one particular direction is zero. Now I want to pause here, and I want you to discuss with your friend about which case can I use for solving this problem. Is it plane stress or plane strain, or I have to derive my own equation from the generalized Hooke's law problem? Okay, so you're suggesting that we need to use the generalized Hooke's law because the case that we have doesn't match any of those special cases of plane strain and plane stress situation. It doesn't match with plane stress because we know that it is confined by the container on the sides and that would apply some sort of forces on the side to hold it. So stress exists on the x and z direction. There is no deformation in the x and z because the rigid container holds it. There is no strain because there is no deformation and there is no strain, right? But there will be a stress. In this case, it is not plain strain either because in the plane strain problem, we had strain zero in one direction. What about this case? Strain in two directions are going to be zero. So none of these equations work for me. I need to derive my own equation for solving this problem. First of all, let me determine stress in the y direction, which is kind of simple. Stress is force over area. Area would be the area of that block on top, and that would be 120 by 120, which is 14,400 squared millimeter. And stress in the y direction is force divided by that area, and that would give us stress of 8.33 megapascals. That would get a negative sign, but I think it's clear in this problem, so I just wrote the magnitude. Now, we are going to start with the generalized Hooke's law in order to determine how much our stress is. For deriving our own equation, I'm going to use the left-hand side equations on this page, which are giving us strain in terms of stress. So I'm going to say that epsilon x is equal to 0 and epsilon z is equal to 0. Let's write down the epsilon x equation. Because epsilon x is 0, that means that sigma x is equal to nu multiplied by sigma y plus sigma z. We will do the same for epsilon z equation. Because epsilon z is equal to 0, we get sigma z equal to nu multiplied by sigma y plus sigma x. All right, we know how much is sigma y. It is 8.33. We have already determined that. Now I'm going to combine these two equations. I'm going to plug sigma z from the second equation to the first equation. Sigma x is nu multiplied by sigma y plus sigma z is nu multiplied by sigma y plus sigma x, right? Now I can solve it for sigma x. Sigma x is going to be equal to nu sigma y plus nu squared sigma y plus nu squared sigma x. I want to simplify that further. So I'm going to move everything that has sigma x to the left side and then simplify that. And that would be 1 minus nu squared multiplied by sigma x equal to sigma y multiplied by nu plus nu squared. Nu plus nu squared could be written as nu multiplied by 1 plus nu. So sigma x would be nu multiplied by 1 plus nu divided by 1 minus nu squared multiplied by sigma y. This equation could be simplified further. 1 minus nu squared 
is 1 minus nu multiplied by 1 plus nu. That could be cancelled from numerator and sigma x would be nu divided by 1 minus nu sigma y. So this is the equation that I wanted to get. We have determined how much is stress in the x direction in terms of sigma y. Now you tell me how much would be sigma z in this problem. Same. Because the problem is symmetric, sigma x and z are going to be equal to each other. All right, now I'm going to plug the numbers. Nu is given to be 0.4. Sigma y, as calculated to be 8.33, would give us 5.556 megapascals for sigma x. Now, I'm going to determine how much is the movement of that top plate because of the applied force. We need to, again, derive another equation. In order to solve that, we need to use, again, strain equation shown on the left side of this page. Epsilon y is 1 over e multiplied by sigma y minus nu sigma x plus sigma z. Sigma x is nu divided by 1 minus nu. Add sigma z to that, which would have the same value. That would give us 2 multiplied by nu divided by 1 minus nu and then multiply that by the nu before that parenthesis. If we factor out sigma y out of the equation, that would give us sigma y divided by e multiplied by 1 minus 2 nu squared divided by 1 minus nu. We have determined how much is strain in the y direction. All right, now let's plug in the numbers, and that would give us 0.00474 epsilon. And if we want to determine how much is the deformation in that direction, looking at the original element, the height of that block is L, which is 120. So I need to multiply strain in the y direction by the height of that block, or L, and that would give us 0.569 millimeter.